Okay, first of all, try and I, the electoral college is really hard for people to understand. Right. Is there any way you can okay. break it down? Small? Most people think that when they go and vote on election day, that the way we determine the winners to add up all the votes and whoever gets the most votes will win, and that's true for most positions that we elect in America and most positions that we elect in Ohio. But it's not the way we elect the president because the voters go and they vote. I just knocked your camera. You need to fix that. I'm sorry. It was my foot. It got stuck on your oh. thing. I apologize. It's actually good. Okay. Is that okay? <laughs> Can we pick up from about yeah, where I yeah. was? So Voters on election day go and cast a vote for president, but they're really casting their vote for electors. And the electors are selected by each party. And in most states, the candidate who gets the most votes has the right. Now, let me say this. Let, 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 let me do that again. In most states, whichever candidate gets the most votes, you elect that set of electors, who then do the official voting for president the next month. So they actually vote in December. And that's when the president is actually officially selected. And that's how we do it. And states get a number of electors equal to their representation in Congress. So you add up all the members of the House of Representatives, and then every state has two senators. So that's how you get the number of electoral votes. The issue is, should all of the electoral votes of a state go to whoever comes in first? So let's say you have a state that's highly competitive like Ohio, and one candidate gets 50.5%, and the other candidate gets 49.5%. Whoever gets 50.5% wins the election in Ohio and gets all of the electoral votes. So 100% of Ohio's electoral votes will be cast for whoever comes in first. And the people who voted for the candidate who comes in second, even though if it's 49.5%, their, their votes stop counting. They play no role. So that's why it's possible for candidates to win some states by large margins, lose other states by small margins, and actually lose the election even if they get the most votes across the country. And that raises a question about what is the role of democracy and, and presidential elections. And for years, in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, 70s, 80s, the 90s, the last decade and this decade, the Gallup poll has been asking people, how would you like to elect the president? Should we just elect the president by who whoever receives the most votes will become president, or should we use the Electoral College? And people always have said, we want just to add up the votes. Whoever receives the most votes wins. Nevertheless, we do still have the Electoral College system. And as we know, in 2000, George W. Bush received more than a half million fewer votes than Al Gore. George W. Bush won the election. Um, now, why, why don't we just do it? It's just the way it's always been, or? Well, first of all, it requires a constitutional amendment to change, and that's hard. And it should be hard to change the Constitution. Second, there's a lot of misunderstanding about the Electoral College, and it's one of the things I'm here today to talk about, to try to explain about the Electoral College. There are some people who think, well, the Electoral College protects small states. It doesn't actually do that. Candidates ignore small states. Small states have almost no role in the election. Barack Obama and Mitt Romney will go to almost none of the small states in this entire general election. They won't run any ads. They'll ignore them completely. But if you think that you're getting an extra advantage, if you think you're getting a little extra power, you're not likely to give it up. Also, in, in states where one party is dominant, that party is very happy to give all its electoral votes to its candidate, knowing full well that that's where those votes are going to go. So we already know who's going to win California. And the Democrats don't want to give the Republicans any of those electoral votes, even though there are more Republican votes cast in California than in any other state. But the, they won't count at all. In Texas, the second biggest state, we know it's going to go Republican, even though there's lots of Democrats. So the Republicans are not eager to give Democratic candidates electoral votes. So there's political greed, we might call it, that gets in the way. So there's misunderstanding and political greed and the difficulty of changing the Constitution. So all that adds up to uh, a difficulty for the American people and I think a blot on our democracy. Now do you think this came to light more because of 2000 and everybody was like, Well, I think people are more sensitive about it because of what happened in 2000. It's happened before, but that's the most recent example. But even in 2004, if 50,000 votes had switched in Ohio from Bush to Kerry, 50,000 votes out of millions cast in Ohio, 
Kerry would have won the election, even though Bush still would have had, this is 2004 now, two and a half million more votes. And so it helped the Republicans in 2000. It almost cost them the election in 2004. Okay. I just have a, a, a two Sure. Um, in about two or three sentences, um, what's the most important thing to know about the Electoral College? The most important thing to know about the Electoral College is that it violates our fundamental principles of political equality, where that everyone's vote counts the same. Because of the Electoral College, some people's votes count more than other people's votes, and, it's, and we're not getting any compensation for that. It does, it's not that the Electoral College provides us some other benefits for this violation of our fundamental principles of political equality. And uh, where can people go to get uh, kind of unbiased uh, information? So. <clears throat> Well, I've written a book called Why the Electoral College is Bad for America, and that may uh, and it's an argument that we should change the Electoral College. That's one place that's one place to start for those who are interested in hearing that argument. There is information on websites, I think on the National Archives there's some information about the Electoral College. Uh, I don't have one one place to send people that, that, that will serve all of their needs because it's one thing to understand just how it works technically, which is also in my book in a completely neutral fashion, and then another thing to evaluate whether it's working well for America.